Welcome back to Aliens Watching Reality TV. I'm Erica. And I am Josh. And we are talking about Love is Blind Season 5, Episode 3. Wow, what an episode we have ahead of us. I honestly thought that Episode 2 would be, was like taking the cake, <laughs> but like this was also a bit Every of a time thing. you think this must be the most ridiculous episode of the season they top it with the next episode yeah the next one is just like just as weird and desperate <laughs> i love those two where they just really love is weird and desperate mm-hmm. alternate title all right let's get into it okay so we left off right before the reveal of jp and taylor and so uh, episode three opens on their their meeting and uh, mm-hmm. I'm curious. First, what what was your impression of their meeting? How did it go? I, I mean, I honestly, I I kind of got the vibes that I got from when what is their face? Uh, when Zach met Irina. Yeah. Like it was like a little bit like that, but unlike well, they Irina, did also sit I, on the bench, and that's never a good sign. Sitting on the bench is just not a good sign. Like it just, it get. I mean, unless you are like super into each other, you know. If you uh, both just whirl naturally to the bench, that's one thing. But if there's a that's pause a, and then that's a different sh- thing. So should we sit down? Uh oh, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, it was. You could tell that one of them was like, "Holy shit, this is awesome! I really am into this person," and the other person was like. I've made a huge mistake, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and, and credit to Taylor, like Taylor really tries to like, not tries to, but like tra- tra- Taylor attempts at least in a, in a much better way than Irina to like, you know, continue the situation onward. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, it's pretty clear that Taylor is not into JP physically, like she makes it very. It's honestly clear. so sad. <laughs> like, it's really sad. Watching it like, a- I, again, I was. It was like causing me physical pain. It's it's miserable because yeah. he he is so happy. Like yeah, he's in love and he's not feeling any awkwardness. It's just her that's feeling it. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> it's it is frankly. I mean, it's one of the yeah. She just like keeps coming back to that point. She's like, yeah, he has the greatest heart, you know. But maybe not the hottest person, but like a yeah, greatest heart. That's what I fell in love with. Like the whole, it just she, it, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> you're you're right in that she, you know, did a pretty good job in the meeting itself. But in her post meeting interview, my lord, yeah. thing she says she talks yeah. about him like he's an ogre. Like this is Beauty and yeah. the Beast, and he's the Beast, yeah. Which is not true. Like they're, I would say they are of a similar level of attractiveness. He's not a hideous yeah. guy by any means. I was, I mean, honestly, I didn't understand why she was mad about it. Like it's, I it's blonde. Know. Maybe because she's a blonde, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I mean, blonde isn't like thinking as blondes are kind of always in demand in America. Uh, with the racism that's prevalent here, but no, I'm with you. Like I felt like they were looks wise on par. I mean, when she when she says she mentions the gap in his teeth, she's like, I in the real world, I normally wouldn't have gone for him. I would have been like, oh, he has a gap in his teeth, I'm not interested. But looks don't matter to me anymore. So I don't even care mm. about the gap in his teeth and it was like well you care about the gap, the gap in his teeth what the hell like it's not even it's not even a particularly i don't know extreme feature you know like some people the first I, thing and only like, thing the love you see of about my them life, is a huge gap in their teeth he that's the life not, the he, love of my life had a, a, a huge gap in their teeth and it was like the most adorable feature on their face Right, you're not supposed to love someone <laughs> despite what their fucking face looks like. It's it's just sad. It is just sad the way that I mean, when I say that she does better than Irina, 
is that the Irina bars in hell. Yeah. Irina didn't have any guile. Like Irina just couldn't hide it and had never been trained to like let someone down gently. Okay. The problem with Taylor's approach is that Taylor is lovey dovey with JP. But on the other hand, she is when she's in front of the camera, she's like trashing him basically in in the most, you know, what you might call it, passive aggressive way possible. And it's just sad to see that, you know, we do not get JP as much. We just keep getting these cutouts of Taylor, like expressing (laughs) the same thing in different words, which is that, oh, my God, he's so hideous. But like, (laughs) I just, you know, he has a good heart. I she mean, really is talking now. about him like that. It's super mm-hmm. harsh. Yeah, it. Uh, it's just, I mean, another difference between this and the Irina and Zach thing is that, like, Zach wasn't in love with Irina at first glance either, either, you know? Like, it was awkward on both sides, but Irina was just really rude about it. Mm-hmm. JP is, he is heart eyes emoji, though, like, the whole time. Like, this. Yeah. He is just happy and in love, and I I think he has no idea that she doesn't like him. Yeah, it's yeah. Sad. I don't think she. I just don't. Un, I feel like he doesn't understand. Yeah, yeah. And she thinks the the silences are awkward, and she keeps talking about it. Their kisses and hugs are definitely awkward to the point where like I was <laughs> just cringing watching it. And then yeah, they run out of things it's... to talk about. They run out of things to talk about in the first time mm-hmm. they've ever met, which is really bad sign oh my god mm-hmm. it's a sad scene yeah yeah it's just i um, need to know more I, about his political beliefs so i stop feeling so bad for him because i'm sure they're horrible yeah i think she so i know more about his political i mean we're pretty clear about his political beliefs in that later on in in episode four we're gonna get to that i'll tell you about a little moment in episode four when the the american flag comes up again because somebody's wearing a suit and he's like oh he like totally approves of the suit because it has the colors of the american flag yeah but that's all we know i mean that's we don't we don't know that that also means he has extremely conservative beliefs that include you know prejudice we don't know that but i don't know anyone else who's that obsessed with the american flag who <laughs> isn't yeah. like that but i don't know i feel sad watching all of this yeah yeah and you never want to see somebody get their heart broken you know yeah. but and second hand they will painful yeah, but at the same time, you know that A, they're going to get their heart broken, and B, this person is just trashing them like, <laughs> like my, while saying that she loves them. And I'm like, oh, my God, just Irina, like, when I go back to the Irina situation, like, I would have liked Taylor to, like, at least be the level of what is his face uh, shake from episode from season two. <laughs> like when he initially meets deep D and he's not interested in her, he starts talking about it with everyone. And, 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 and no, Taylor is just that was so... terrible. That was awful. But no, no, no. What I'm talking about is that she is like you and I so clearly get it, right? That she's saying that he's ugly and, but whatever, like, <laughs> um, but when she's talking, she's not saying it that like she's not implicitly saying it. And she's not being uh, honest about her feelings with her. Sorry, she's not all. explicitly. She's not explicitly saying it. And she's you're right. She's not. Op- she's not honest about her feelings in that. I don't think she is like really into him. Like no. <laughs> after seeing him, I she's think she not. did actually have an image in her mind that she was falling in love with and he's not that he's a he's a person you know and i think she did have expectations whether whether she wanted to or not you know maybe you know she just uh i think yeah she was building up a fantasy and the real thing never lives up to the fantasy yeah i i just yeah i was like for me the the part of the part where they hang out and like there's nothing to talk about i was like wait so like on what have you connected 
Like, there's just yeah. nothing to talk about. I mean, did you really want to get married so bad that you had to? <laughs> I think that's a big part of it. I think she's or, or very in love really with the idea of the being show? married. I think she loves the idea of being in love and being married. And and he also loves that. And that's that's more what they have <laughs> fallen in love with than each other, actually. Well, that's sad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, let's move on to uh, something less. Sad. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not laughing at their at their what you might call it at their at at the misery of of JP. Uh, but I, I'm just when things are at the are so like unbelievably painful, yeah, you have to just like laugh because it's just too too sad and. I think anyone listening to this podcast understands that. Um, we have never gotten hate mail about inappropriate laughter. Um, <laughs> so, uh, next scene, Stacy has written a poem for Izzy, and she's reading it to Miriam. And wow, I hate I hate this poem. Like, I. Because the second line just puts me into a tizzy, and you just you know that that's gonna be the first rhyme, or maybe 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 that's not how everyone felt. It's just like, of course you said tizzy; it's the obvious rhyme, and it's so cheesy. And like, this is where I am. I'm I don't know an Ebenezer Scrooge, a Grinch, a cold, hard, dead lump of coal. Uh, but this is way too fucking cheesy for me. Yeah, you found it very cheesy. I felt like, okay, so the reason, it was not the greatest poem in the world, obviously, but I felt like Stacy knew how fucking cheesy it was. Like, the idea For wasn't sure. to, like, impress him with love. The idea was, look, I can write a cheesy poem. <laughs> Let's laugh about it. But, yeah, a tizzy. I, but mm. then it wasn't, like, funny enough for, to make that worth it, you know? I mean, it wasn't the greatest I'll say this. Also, just like why are why are so many people writing poems? I just don't really need. I don't need to hear other people's poems. I guess, and I just maybe maybe this is yeah, and maybe this is a personal shame that I feel po- poems should be kept private, you know, and I'm just <laughs> projecting it on other people. But no, I, I I don't like hearing people's poems like that. Yeah, you're not into that. <laughs> no. <laughs> And then, so we see Stacy and Izzy, and they finally have like a deep conversation to prove that they can talk about things and not just play mini golf. And they talk about their fears of abandonment. And yeah, yeah, I don't... yeah, fears of abandonment. That's kind of a very human fear, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I it, it's I feel like it's innate because, like, as a baby, you can't like survive on your own. So, <laughs> it's like, yeah, inherently, you're going to be afraid of being completely abandoned. Yeah, yeah, I so that's that's okay. I'm I'm there with that, but again, I, I feel like they they have a lot of fun. He talks about how he loves her. But she's not ready to make the, you know, the drop the L bomb. Yeah, that's later in the episode. But I mean, we can talk about it if you want. Yeah, I mean, we could we could move on to when we get there, we can talk about it. But like, hmm, I don't know. I like at this point, I was still not convinced about Stacy and Izzy. Oh, I'm 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 not. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think Stacy was the right choice for Izzy in this context. But do I think that they're like? true love and a great couple and uh, no i don't think so yeah no I'm, I'm i'm with you on that all right let's so then we see uche and alia again and they're actually happy this is a, the rare scene of the two of them where they are smiling instead of crying and they're just sharing weird things about themselves and the their th- things aren't very weird but at least it's not a traumatic a hangout for one. So if you were on a date and somebody asked you what is something weird about you, what would your answer be? 
are we on yeah, right now? Yeah, I'm asking you. Damn. <laughs> You're asking me live in front of the audience? What is something weird about me? Yeah, because that's what Uche and Aaliyah uh, were talking about. I have way too many interests. Like, it's, it's really hard for people to pin me down as a person who does one or two or three things. Something like, weird about things. you. Like, that doesn't have to be... Just she likes to <sighs> squeeze elbow skin. It can be anything. She likes to also have the honey with the other thing. She just I don't think eating, eating honey by itself is that touching weird. Touching habits and no, I love honey. I just like to like pour it right into my mouth directly from the holder. Uh, something weird about me. Hmm. Yeah, I'm putting you on the hot. I'm obsessed with butts, but that's. A lot of people. Guy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. I mean, this was a joke, but now you're making me regret it. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I mean, I think, the, uh, I think the weird thing about me is that you pretty quickly notice that I am really not that into humans. I'm a lot more into animals and plants and just being on my own. Well, I guess, yeah, I don't think that's weird, but most neurotypical people would. So <laughs> I think it counts. Yeah, but I mean, it's like it's almost it's almost like I personally feel like I've really come to a point where like I just really like the few people that I know I'm happy knowing. And I I think I've really come to a point where humans just <laughs> don't interest me anymore. Unless they're on a reality dating show. Unless they're on a reality dating show and, and you get to I can overanalyze see it with your best friend, yeah, Erica. Exactly. I know. <laughs> That's exactly what I like doing. From the comfort and safety of my home. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't have to be the one like putting my emotions out there. <laughs> Other people are doing it. I think and I get so much I get how I would just never ever do this. It's like just a recurring theme of thought yeah. while watching this show is like, oh my god, I would never do this. I mean, <laughs> my biggest fear is obviously like ending up in a situation like Taylor, where you know you really like some. I mean, not like Taylor, but like my biggest fear is falling in love with someone on there because that's who I am, and then meeting them and turns out they're Hitler or something. You know, like well. well that has a low probability, probably. I know, but I, I, I'm, I'm making fun of it. But no, I'd never be on a show like this. Like, no. I think there's a very high probability that I would fall in love with somebody, and then it would be completely different in person, and I would not feel it in person. I think, like, I could totally see me doing that. And so I will never, yeah. never inflict that on anyone. <laughs> will you be like, will you be then go on on like in your cutouts be like, I have stopped falling in love for looks. That is why I'm with this person right now. <laughs> I think I have better manners <laughs> saying than Saying things that. like Lydia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I, I cannot get over that. Like, I mean, sure, he wiped his tears with the American flag and he yeah. is suspicious. He's suspicious. He may have been a January 6th uh, fanatic. <laughs> um, okay. We have no evidence of that. He's just but, suspiciously you know what I mean. patriotic. But he's suspiciously <laughs> Everything else we know about I love him that. paints a picture of a very kind, sweet person. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, he's. And uh, he doesn't deserve what he got from Taylor. I always As for think, the too, weird things. like, what happens when they see, like, he watched this this week, whether they're still together or not. Oh, God, like, I know. Hearing what she said about him right after they met, that must be just like a knife in the gut. So one of the things that, you know, obviously happens with shows like this is uh, there does come a moment of reckoning. Where people find out, like people say things and then they're caught, like they're found out. It's found out that they, you know, they didn't actually say, they didn't mean what they said or, you know, they misrepresented what they had said. Yeah, like one of those things, remember from the ultimatum queer love, <laughs> where Yoli heard like an earful 
uh, because she had been saying and doing different things. Well, yeah, um, that's why you turn in, tune into the reunion to see people have to defend yeah. <laughs> their hypocrisy and backstabbing. Exactly. It's just it is so much. But yeah, so they uh, they managed to they managed to stick together. Yeah, they managed to have a scene with no problems. Woo! Moving on. Um, <laughs> so then we go to Lydia and Milton, and I would say. This is probably Lydia and Milton's best scene. You know, it's like the best as in like best for them, best like showing them as a as a couple. Like it's sort of mm-hmm. one of the only scenes that I feel like has any kind of chemistry or you can like see why they're doing this with each other, you know? Yeah. She gave him uh, a rock I mean, and they it, plan it, to look at it under a microscope together. And you're like, yeah, that's love, baby. Yeah, that is totally love. I love looking at stuff like, so under the microscope, and I always do it alone. Her, her favorite color is yellow, and he like gave her like a little yellow, like a little bee, like a it's like a squish. It's a big bee. Thing. Yeah, it's a big bee. You can <laughs> you can cuddle with it, and it's cute. And then you know, at the end of the episode, as they get all very lovey dovey, she like gets close to the wall, and she's like, "I want you, I want you so bad." And I was like, "Cool." <laughs> like, <laughs> I I mean, the pods are a weird place. You know, you go from one person to the other pretty quickly. But yeah, I mean, I'm ha- I was happy for them. I don't say I I am. I said I was. <laughs> yeah i mean it's i don't know why i like I, i'm kind of fascinated by by this couple like i want i want to see them together i want to see them meet i can't really imagine it they <laughs> they make no sense really but i'm kind of fascinated by it at the same time uh, yeah yeah uh but this was the only scene where i was like okay yeah i can see like the justification behind them continuing to date. And I, I did think it was, I mean, sad, obviously, but just like also very interesting when he's talking about his, his problems with scoliosis and uh, his fear Mm -hmm. of eventually being paralyzed. And then the question that he asked was, who's going to love me then? And, that just like that is so that's so sad because it's like that's intense internalized ableism intense and yeah and lydia she sort of goes will you let me talk i i'm gonna be there and so like she's being supportive but also kind of blowing off his feelings um i just feel like yeah he's got a lot of shit to work through I also feel like him telling this whole story about his scoliosis and organ failure and all of that, because people are just looking at him as a 24-year-old, and like, why would a Mm 24-year-old and a 30-year-old be interested in each other? What would they even have to talk about? I bet he has a very hard time connecting with other 24-year-olds, just because that kind of an experience is, it, it changes you as a person. I mean, I say that from having my own health he's, crisis he looks autistic honestly Every, he is, he is. Right like now. he yeah. everything about him he's very autistic when i was 24 that's how i i was it, it seemed like i had the soul of a 50 year old and like i i absolutely would have thought everything that he thinks right now and so in in a certain way i'm kind of like i'm like you should have this experience you know because everybody deserves this kind of experience, like just experiences in life. But at the same time, I can totally see this not working out. Well, yeah, because even though he is not like other 24 year olds and might be mature in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. there is still a, a difference between being 24 and 30. And you can't really understand it at 24. That's the thing with like age gaps is the younger person frequently thinks it's not a problem because you can't see the things you still need to learn and the ways in which you'll grow. And yeah, so I, I, 
I wouldn't be as like, like, I don't think he should just date other 24 year olds like that. Probably that probably hasn't gone well for him. And for a reason, he probably cannot really connect to people his age who just have a lot less life experience than he has because he just has had a lot of varied and often serious life experience. But at the same time, he's like, nobody has an old soul. It's not like really, you know, he's not 30. It's going to come up. So the, so that here's, he's 24. Yeah, yeah. There are going to be issues because of it. I mean, one of the things with maturity is that you can be mature in some areas and then immature in others. So you could have a very mature world view, as in like, you could have a very mature view of life and death, but at the same time have like no experience about dating, you know? Uh, you could have like very, you could have very mature thoughts about human relationships, but then you could be like pretty immature when it comes to like long term planning. Like maturity is not like one thing. There, there, maturity in a way is like experience in, a, in, in separate areas and different fields. And so you can be mature in one, immature in another. And so when you're 24, uh, sure, you can, you know, compensate for some, but you cannot compensate for all of it. You know, it doesn't matter how smart you are, how much experience you've had. It's just, you cannot compensate for certain things. The only thing that compensate f- compensates for it is time. And 24, it's just young. Yeah, it is young. And it's the kind of young where you don't realize how young you are. No, not at all. You're like, <laughs> you're like totally under the, under the, the 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 mirage of your own 24 year oldness <laughs> yeah where you're like i'm actually one year away from 25 <laughs> yeah because you still think 25 is old adult. and you think 30 is old yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't even have so like funny. your real full adult personality yet <laughs> no not at all like you your face is gonna look different like you just it's still like maturing your bones are gonna defer like it's there's so much going on a lot of the reasons people are like weirded out by or opposed to this age gap, I actually don't agree with though, because even just like what I've heard people talking about so far is an assumption that a 24 year old and a 30 year old are going to be in very different life stages. And maybe a 30 year old, it like doesn't want to go out and, you know, party anymore. <laughs> and they're starting to, have different priorities and those are all assumptions based on age that definitely don't apply to everyone but especially are not safe assumptions to make about autistic people we don't we don't tend to change along with the expected milestones and so i mean i know that's been a frustration for me is like people think they know something about you just based off of how old you are Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I definitely I could see I could see Lydia and Milton being in a similar life stage and because it seems like they both have good careers and are you know have good education already behind them and they're maybe it seems like they're both probably still in a more young adult frame of mind where Lydia's like, yeah, go play the Wii with your friends until four. And like, yeah. let's pick up and move to Argentina. Like, just because she, she's 30 doesn't mean um, she goes to bed at 8 p.m. and is trying to have a baby. You know, like, that's yeah, yeah, that's absolutely. not a fair assumption. No, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, I am totally with you on that. So, yeah, next is uh, <laughs> Izzy and Johnny. Yeah, Johnny. I'm just, I, you know, everyone has had so many thoughts about her, and I don't want to say anything horrible, but like, it was just, my God, what a, what a, what a basic white girl run. Like, just, wow. What do you mean? Like, she did everything to get this guy. <laughs> like, still doesn't. And, 
she she like dumped everyone else for him and it just isn't gonna happen at the end i mean it's really just she's going after the person who is least interested in her and i think this is just it's a it's a thing you see with people who have very bad self-esteem and if the person who doesn't if they can get the love from the person who does not love them then that will prove that they are lovable and they will finally be able to love themselves that's kind of their mindset the people who already love them they must be wrong or flawed in some way it's sort of like that Rodney, the safe Rodney Dangerfield option. joke, right? Like, I don't want to be it's a member this... of any club that will have me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm terrible. So if you love me as I am right now, then you must also be terrible or you have low standards. There's something, something wrong with you. They're looking for There's the validation something... of the person who doesn't yeah. really like them. And so a bunch of people just in the show are doing it. I mean, it, it, Izzy's doing it. He's going after the girl who is, you know, who doesn't say, I love you, and she's like, I'm I'm thinking about it. <laughs> um, yeah, thinking about it. I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, but I, I, <laughs> I actually think the beginning of this scene is, like, kind of funny because it's terrible because Izzy's just telling Johnny how awesome his connection with Stacy is. Like, I know. He so it is well. Just... It's easy and fun. <laughs> he's basically rubbing yeah. it in her face before he breaks up with her. I know. He's like, I'm going to just read this to you. Okay. I know you would understand this more than anybody. But, like, after being in an engagement or marriage... But like after Johnny's like, it has to make sense to me. And like, do you say this to John? <laughs> this person who dumped other people for you, and now you're like, it has to make sense to me. But and you have to be understanding of it. Like, yeah, <laughs> you can't even have like, yeah, you can't even be upset about it because. I'm putting that emotional labor on you as well. Um, yeah, and the way that it ends is just so... Yeah. She's like, so are you ending things with me? And he's like, yes, yep. I am. I, <laughs> I'm sorry and blah, blah, blah. But like... Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is over. I think it's a definitely a good thing that they, uh, you know, don't continue to pursue a relationship because... They're terrible together, and they're both terrible in this scene. Where like, yeah, Izzy is. Yeah, like it's just not. It really does not look like. Like yeah. I don't know how. I Izzy doesn't know how to do it, and she doesn't. Yeah, like Izzy has no regard point, for she, her feelings or care about them, and she is using like manipulation and guilt tripping. And and just like some very <laughs> desperate and toxic like strategies to try and get him to stay, and it it's it's just like so clearly this is not this is not a good relationship. Like there there's nothing here that you should be fighting for, and she's Johnny has convinced herself that somehow like this is the the real connection and if Izzy chooses Stacy that will be the fear based choice and the way it, like Chris was her safe choice and it like she's really built that up in her she head the, is, the special connection with Izzy is like mostly her projection I I she's just the way she just moves from one thing to another and like says the say says the opposite thing to different people. Uh, yeah, I just I don't know what the hell she's doing. I don't know if she understands. I don't know if she like if she's doing this purposefully. That's kind of a little evil. <laughs> I I but, think she lies to herself. Like I I don't think. Yeah. I think she exhibits absolutely terrible relationship characteristics and habits so like 
I think she's not <laughs> good to be in a relationship with, but I don't think she is intentionally lying as much as she's shifting she's shifting her her reality to avoid pain. And so every uh, time it's really sad. Yeah, every time she would have to confront something painful, she just recontextualizes what it means. And so she's uh, also, the, I don't know, <laughs> there's just this thing, it's very common and it annoys me. So like after Johnny gets dumped, she's in the ladies area talking to a pal. Uh, and she's just like, yeah, he was scared as he was scared. And so he made the safe choice. And and he wasn't ready to be vulnerable, but I am. And it's just a story that people frequently tell themselves, like, oh, he's just scared of how much he loves me. And No, he's not scared like, of how much he loves you. He just doesn't actually love you. grow up and accept that, like, he's not that into you. I'm just, like, he's just not that into you. And yeah. that's okay. Like, it's okay. And if he's not that into you, then he's definitely not the person for you. Which also, no, she just, then she says while she's crying, I just wanted someone to love me for me. But it's like, that's not true. Yeah. Because Chris does love you for you and you didn't want that. So yeah. that's not what you really want. Yeah. And then as soon as she goes back, like, it doesn't even take two minutes for Chris to come back into the conversation and how she might, she should try giving him another look you know and I yeah was she's just like, like oops i got rid of my fallback i was plan. like <laughs> i was like dude he was crying he was crushed like he was hurt and you are just gonna go see him again in the same dress in which you got dumped by izzy like my god why like why Especially, especially like in situations like this, <laughs> like if I was her, I'd be terrified that, you know, Chris would be like, no, fuck you. I'm nobody's like second, you know, second best. I don't need that. But she's going to risk it. She's going to go and try with Chris again. Well, I think and she can risk it because she's not really that emotionally invested. Like she doesn't. You know apologize in a very sincere way as she you know she doesn't seem to acknowledge the pain and hurt that she put him through and she doesn't also give a very good explanation for uh why why she did that you know and so I, like it seems to me, if you want to get somebody back after breaking their heart, you got to try fucking harder than that. Also, she tells and Chris to his well, <laughs> to his wall, <laughs> that he's the safe choice, and in some ways, that's less exciting. I'm like, I'm, what the fuck is wrong with you? You don't say that to somebody. And of course, mm. it's like, well, I don't like that because I'm excited to, to about you. I, I want someone who's excited about me. Like. Saying to somebody you're the safe choice, no one's like great. <sighs> yeah, that that's that's what I want to be. I'm your safety plan. I'm your backup. I'm your plan B. Come on, nobody wants that. The worst part of all of this is that Chris knew that Izzy is the one that Johnny wanted, and that Izzy turned Johnny down. So when he finds out that Johnny wants to see him again, he comes to the men's area. And it's just really sad how he talks about, you know, he tries to make light of the situation with Izzy being there that, you know, he's basically considering <laughs> uh, the the girl that that Izzy dumped, you know, um, and it, yeah, it's I think just he handles sad. it in a very mature way with Izzy. He handles it like incredibly well, but it's sad. Like I'm sad for him. I'm like, you deserve so much better than this. Like this yeah, is not. He does. This isn't. He. You deserve better than this. Um, also, <laughs> in that their first meeting after she broke up with him, um, where it ends with basically he says like, um, 
well, I do want you. And I, I, so it sounds like he's down to get back together. And then she <laughs> asks, are we ready for an engagement? And <laughs> it's like, yeah. what? No. The vibe of this conversation is so sad. It is not engagement tea. It is impossible to imagine switching from this conversation to will you marry me? It's just, it's so it out of touch. so out of touch. I think there's this, you know, there's obviously a part of her that, I thought obviously a part of her, like, so many people come to the show just to get, like, not to find love, but rather to just get married. Have that, you know, free wedding and all that experience and whatnot. And it was just, on the one hand, you see Chris, who is so hurt. And on the other hand, you have this person who's stuffing her mouth with food and laughing. (laughs) Not apologizing properly to him. Like, it was just, it was such a thing. Like, he was so, I wanted to get in there and be like, bro, you and I are going to go have some beers and, you know, just hang out. Like, this is I'm sure at this point, he has no shortage of women who want to date him. They're. Yeah. I'm, I'm. I'm sure he's so fucking a lot of people have seen so him on the show. And are yeah, yeah, and he's so emotionally available. Like he's emotionally available. That is something that very few people are. Yeah, and somebody and... will already be there and already be as excited about him as he is about them. Yeah. Like you don't need to make this painful shit work with Johnny Helmo. Yeah, and so. He, uh, <laughs> he's like, she, she tries to give him another, I mean, she tries to like get him, uh, but he's like, um, I'm actually going to need a minute to think about this. Yeah. He just, which I, res- I respect that, you know, he's not responding just from a, a place of hurt. He doesn't want to do something he'll regret. He needs to, he needs to go think about it. Yeah, no, no. And I was like, I, like you said, like, I totally respect, respect that. Um, and the part that really like hurt me was that Chris, <laughs> he keeps trying to make light of the situation. So this is what happens. Johnny tells Chris that the reason that she likes him is because she feels safe with him and she always dates guys who are not not the safe option okay who are the more the excitement danger option but what she told izzy (laughs) she always goes for the safe guys um but she never actually loves them and so this is like it's a complete reversal like on the one hand you're telling one guy that you go for safe guys but on the other you're telling the other guy that you're going for excited guy exciting guys um, and it does seem like this it? influences chris's decision about what to do you know it does i mean it would it would influence my decision i mean for sure how would you feel if someone said that to you and and the connotation was that you are not going to be loved because you know you're the safe option I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> obviously, yes, that's bad. But I think, I think the thing with her telling them opposite stories is, and I, I could be too generous in my interpretation. It's certainly possible, but I don't think it's mm. necessarily as much of a case of just like bald faced lying as it seems. Mm. I. I think it's um so I think it it's it seems apparent to me that any outside observer would be able to see that Johnny's pattern is going after emotionally unavailable guys who don't really care about her. That's obviously her pattern because she's 30 years old has never had a stable relationship and the only person she mm. has ever loved was not a good partner to her. So Mm. No, you don't go for the safe guys. <laughs> like, that clearly, yeah, you don't go for the safe guys. But you, in order to justify going after the the person who's bad for you over and over again, you have to have a you have to be lying to yourself in some way. And so, I think my guess, or what it seems like to me, is 
she goes after and she falls in love with people who are emotionally unavailable and treat her like crap. And then she rebounds with guys who just like her and make her feel good about herself and pumps the ego back up, you know, but she doesn't necessarily like those guys. So eventually she Mm. is like, oh, I got to get out of this because it was always like she says, I mean, she was in a rebound marriage from uh, the devastation over losing the love of her life. Uh, So both things are true in a way like it's Don't i can ever see how get in a rebound <laughs> God, yeah. so like the, i can see how both Don't of ever those get patterns into a rebound marriage it's the worst i mean i can see how both of those patterns even though they seem diametrically opposed could exist within the same uh same person <laughs> at the same time but she's one thing that's very odd to me is that her self, I mean, obviously her self-awareness is not great, but the fact that she couldn't even think like how weird it is that she just said her, (laughs) her pattern is going for the safe guys. And now she's saying like that she can't tell, Oh, you're saying the opposite to one versus the other. Like, um, that to me is, is, a little odd like and it makes me think also she probably doesn't have a great and this is conjecture but i would guess that she probably does not have a great track record with honesty because Mm -hmm. what i have learned about people who lie the most is that they lie to themselves all the time and are like instantly Mm -hmm. convinced of their own lies and the truth is just like a fluid thing that <laughs> is whatever they need it to be right in the moment. And the mm. way that they can immediately pivot from one truth to another is like fascinating. Cause it's not just calculated lying. It is like they lie with their whole mindset. And I, I think she does that. Uh, it's, it, it just, it really breaks your heart for Chris. It's really, He's just, he looks so genuine and he's just so deeply hurt. I want to move on from Chris's sad face. All right. Well, let's talk about Izzy and Stacy because um, we, we have missed one of their scenes, which, <laughs> uh, so basically, right after Izzy breaks up with Johnny, he whether this was actually immediately afterwards or not, the next scene is he's seeing Izzy and it's kind of fascinating to see like the thoughtful, withdrawn, sad person that he was displaying uh, mere moments ago is absolutely gone. He is like, woohoo, I can't wait to see Stacy. So glad I don't have to deal with Johnny anymore. You know, he's he's not uh-huh. fucking crying over that breakup in any way. And that's that's not a bad thing. It's like it's a it's not bad that he's excited about Stacy, but it is sort of like I think he is a pretty fake person and I think he's good at mm. just like showing people kind of what they want to see regardless of what how if it's how he feels you know and so Hmm. then yeah when he gets to see stacy he tells her how their connection is so easy and effortless and just feels right and (laughs) he feels like he wants the love bomb he says where are you at with the l bomb which that (laughs) Dot That's in not itself a great a sign weird. to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like how do you, how does how do you even say that to someone like so? When are you going to tell me that you love love me? Yeah, but you, you can't even each say other yet. love in, like, because pods. they're so uncomfortable with the word love. So you say L bomb, right? And then she, and oh, he's she already says, confessed his love to her. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's already told her like a million times. And I, I definitely, you know, agree with her that, like, you don't have to say it back just because someone said it to you. It's, you can 
take your mm-hmm. time and say it when you mean it. But it sounds like she, I mean, she basically says she's had other long-term relationships where she never told them that she loved them. And so she, like, she doesn't tend to say, I love you. So maybe she doesn't love you. <laughs> like, yeah. And maybe love is just not her thing. It, I mean, I don't know. But like, I feel like for me, anyways, the love part would have to come before the getting engaged part. Mm hmm. So it's a little concerning that she's not even ready to say, I love you, but they're going to get engaged <sighs> ASAP, you know? Yeah. Like, that's one of the things, but I mean, I, I, I respect Stacy and that she, she clearly communicates where she isn't, where she isn't. Izzy just seems like, like Izzy's interest in Stacy just seems like a, the thrill of the chase, you know? Absolutely. She's the one who didn't want him as much, you know, who yeah. would give him just enough validation and then pull it back so that he wanted more, at which it, it doesn't seem like she was doing that, you know, intentionally to be manipulative. But God, that mm-hmm. shit does work on people. That shit does work on people. So, yeah, I feel like we might as well just get to the bombshell at the end of the episode. Let's talk about it. Uche oh, the part. drops a bomb on Aaliyah and says, I haven't been completely honest with you. Uh, There's actually someone in the pods who I I know and have dated previously, and it's Lydia. And <sighs> by the way, like minutes minutes before she came here to say Uche... She was in there, like, hugging and, like, being super friends with Lydia. Yeah. The second time I I watched it, because I watched all the episodes twice, I could see, I was looking at Lydia's face, and I could see how much Lydia is trying to hide her feelings. Like, once you know what Lydia is not saying, those scenes just take on, like, another layer. Yeah. Because sometimes, like... Sometimes she's very uncomfortable and very unhappy looking, you know? Yeah. Um, no, she starts, like, you start, once you know this secret, the entire season just, like, blows up. Oh, yeah. I mean, because this is one of the biggest twists in Love is Blind history, yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, you suddenly, like, I don't think, I don't remember uh, uh, ever, like, somebody knowing someone. No, it's never happened. What was what was your reaction? What did you think? I was actually very surprised. Oh, I was surprised. God, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I was like, wait, so Lydia wanted to keep dating Uche. Uh, wanted to date Izzy. And now is head over heels for Milton. Like, <laughs> yeah. girl, what's going on with you? Like, something's up here that you are... Yeah, I mean Johnny, I, <laughs> Johnny, and both Johnny and Lydia are, you know, multiple. Like th- this, I don't know. I mean Johnny, I could say sure, you know, a villain, <laughs> but I'm not understanding what's going on with Lydia here. Yeah, Lydia is is still a bit of a mystery to me as well, just because there's. So much going on there. Because at first, it's like, if you look at it as just, she was intentionally keeping the secret the whole time. Like, it's so mm-hmm. fucked up. It's so fucked up. But there... Uche but was there, also keeping it secret. Yes, yeah. And I... But she was friends with Aliyah the whole thing, time. I, I think this is actually a bigger secret like on Lydia's part like I think Lydia had a greater yeah Lydia should have Lydia should have just said by the way this is the thing like I know this guy and yeah and and the other thing that was super weird uh, yeah I mean the thing that was weird was both of them kept it from her from Alia so I can explain that I can explain it Um, go for it so at this point at least the narrative that has come out from 
Uche giving interviews and also people within the production side giving interviews, they apparently, if they really did find out just in that moment that Uche and Lydia knew each other, the producers were not aware ahead of time and they were pretty surprised because they try to screen for these things and they're like, oh shit. But we'll let you guys stay in the experiment, but you cannot tell anyone about this. Mm. You cannot tell anyone that you know each other or else you'll have to leave the experiment because that ruins the experiment since to have somebody who right. already knows what someone on the other side looks like. And so that I feel like makes that changes it a lot because if, uh, if Lydia and Uche were just keeping this secret completely of their own volition, that would be. Okay. Painless. Now I, okay. This is different. Yeah, no, this but is very different. I still think, I still think Lydia handled this in a really sus way because if I was in this exact same situation, what I would do is then I would not engage in yeah. conversations about Uche. I would I would keep myself out of that stuff, you know? Yeah, no, she she took part in that. She yeah. took part in that. And like that is and, weird and to buddy up to Aaliyah and become such close friends with her and stuff when the entire time she had this information that Aliyah did not have. Y'all fucked three months ago. That was too yeah. soon. And, and you were together. And if this show was, if this was filmed in 2022, you know, they were kind of a thing for two years at least. Yeah, you know? it sounds like they were on and off for two years. And that's a lot. Like, it just, if I was Aliyah, I would feel extremely betrayed. Um, Absolutely. And I wonder why... Like, what was Lydia's motivation for befriending Aaliyah in that way? It just, I think it is. It was very sus. Yeah. Yeah. It. And so I feel like if she had, you know, not been able to tell anyone, but then basically recused herself from issues regarding yeah, Uche. Then, regarding Uche, which she doesn't do. That's the she, thing. She, like, she does not she recuse does herself. She opposite of that. Um, and she gets very involved, especially when the episode where Uche she's extremely is extremely like, involved right off the bat, yeah. Like, the episode where Uche, like, is super judgmental, like, yeah. she's giving opinions about him. While hugging yeah. her. And I'm like, dude, now that, you know, looking back, you're like, dude, you should not have been doing that. Like, that was, yeah, that was There's very, a, very unethical. Y yes, there is a lot of unethical and behavior. I mean, and you can see it even better on a, on a rewatch where you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe, like, she knows right now that, that <laughs> that's her ex. And, like, and especially the, mm. the just the bond that she and Leah formed that like it feels manipulative of Aaliyah and like um pretty cruel you know like you're letting yeah. somebody love you and trust you while keeping a massive secret from them but uh, yeah yeah and it's about their life they're about to get married to this guy like, yeah. it's not some it's not like a job application it's not it's nothing like that it's like it's literal marriage the one sacred thing that everybody fucking wants in this american <laughs> society you know what i mean like yeah you you went after that sacred thing how dare you i have seen some people theorize and i i i wonder about it myself did lydia find out that Uche was going on Love is Blind and apply because of that, because she was hoping to win him back. Hmm. And is You've she seen... just trying to continue with the experiment because she's still hopeful that being around him, will she'll be able to win. Because wow. she doesn't seem super over him, especially, I mean, I guess we'll get more into it in the episode four recap, but... I don't, I don't, I don't know, but there are some like really awful possibilities of like what's going on here. Yeah. Oh and, my God. And then there are some 
less awful but very misguided possibilities and i just i'm i feel like i don't know enough to make a judgment one way or another but yeah i was floored absolutely floored yeah like this has never happened um <laughs> and uh wild yeah, and this is where the especially also cuz uche was doing all that lecturing about honesty while you knew you had a secret <laughs> Oh my god. Unbelievable. But uh yeah, so that uh, is the cliffhanger of the day and we'll be back tomorrow with a recap of episode 4 and then we get four new episodes on Friday and we finally get to see these fuckers go to Mexico. Yes. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and until then, we are going to just, you know, live our lives and not think about this. Live, laugh, love, till death do us part. Yay! Amen. All right, bye. Aliens Watching Reality TV is hosted by Erica Heidewald and Josh Sharier. It's produced and edited by Erica Heidewald. That's me. And our theme song is Just World by Erica Heidewald, which is also me. Available for streaming on iTunes and Spotify. For $5 a month, you can subscribe to our Patreon and get an extra full-length episode of the podcast every week. Right now, we're covering Love is Blind Season 1. We'd love to hear from you. Our social media links are in the episode notes, or you can write to us at alienswatchingrealitytv at gmail.com. Thank you for listening, and as always, until death do us part. Amen. Welcome to the world, let me tell you what I've learned.